the office business is increasingly segmented between premier workplaces and the balance of the office market. And uh, CBRE Econometrics has done a lot of work on this, where in our cities, they define about 17% of the space and about 10% of the buildings as premier. And those buildings just have extremely different operating performance. Their net absorption is positive, whereas the net absorption for all the other buildings is, is very negative. Joining me today is Owen Thomas, Chairman and CEO of BXP. So Owen, what is your view on the broader factors facing the office sector today? Where does BXP fit into that picture? And what trends are likely to have the most impacts, impact on BXP longer term? Sarah, thank you for having me again today. Um, I would say overall in our business, the sentiment around office is much, much worse than what we're experiencing in the operations of our business. And there are a couple of things um, around leasing trends that are factoring into that. First is flight to quality. The office business is increasingly segmented between premier workplaces and the balance of the office market. And uh, CBRE Econometrics has done a lot of work on this, where in our cities, they define about 17% of the space and about 10% of the buildings as premier. And those buildings just have extremely different operating performance. Their net absorption is positive whereas the net absorption for all the other buildings is, is very negative. Uh, the occupancy is, or excuse me, the vacancy is about 10% versus 15% uh, for the rest of the building. So that's been a key driver for us because uh, our leasing volumes continue to be steady. Uh, our occupancy in our portfolio, we think this year is gonna be flat to maybe up uh, somewhat. So uh, that's been a key driver uh, in, in leasing. The second thing I would say related to that is, uh, Increasingly in our markets, um, land, the, the clients are much more focused on uh, what is the capital structure of the building, who is the landlord, uh, who is going to service me you know, as, a, as a client, as a tenant in the building for the long term, uh, are they going to sell the building or not. So uh, BXP sponsorship is increasingly distinctive uh, when we're working with clients. You know, that all being said, um, even though the economy is not in a recession, uh, I do think many of the clients that we serve are suffering from a slowdown in their business. And that is why our leasing this year is, though it's steady, it is slower than it was in 2022. And how is BXP positioned in terms of access to the capital markets? And how do you expect your financing needs to play out in the near term? Yeah. Well, you know, again, going back to sentiment is a lot worse than reality. Uh, sentiment uh, does impact uh, the capital markets, but fortunately, you know, as a public company, we do have access to lots of different sources of capital. So uh, we can is issue unsecured debt. Uh, we just did a $750 million 10-year uh, unsecured finance. We're triple B plus rated. We just completed that financing uh, four or five weeks ago. Uh, we are studying right now pr uh, placing some uh, secured mortgage financing on some of our buildings, so that's available to us. Uh, we have assets that we can sell. I think it's more likely uh, and that we could get better pricing for residential assets that we own today than our office assets. That's a possibility. And we're also looking at bringing in uh, joint venture partners to parts of our development pipeline and our development portfolio that is uh, fully pre-leased. But um, in terms of uh, where our balance sheet is, uh, today we have $3.2 billion of liquidity between our credit facility and cash on our balance sheet. And that uh, can readily fund our um, capital needs over the next couple of years. And BXP has taken strides to diversify into life science and residential real estate. What more should we expect from the company on this front? So uh, let's break that down. We call uh, life science and residential actionable adjacencies. So, because we have the real estate in the right locations to build out both a life science and residential portfolios, we're attacking them a little bit differently. So let me go through that for a minute. So life science uh, for us was about four or five percent of our um, NOI three or four years ago. Today it's about eight percent, and we just launched a couple of large fully pre-leased lab developments in East Cambridge. When those are delivered, it will be up to about 13% uh, life science. So we are growing um, the contribution of life science revenue and NOI from our company, 
but we're doing it by developing buildings and converting buildings that we currently own. So we're basically maximizing the value of real estate that we already own. We're not out buying a lot of new sites and buildings. Uh, so we intend to grow that as a percentage of total. On residential, uh, similarly, we have built about 2,000 units of apartments. Now, some of those we have sold in the last few years, and we have another pipeline of well over 2,000 units of entitled and unentitled land that can accomplish those kinds of sales. And in those developments, um, we are primarily doing it with financial partners, and we're not necessarily growing the residential as a percentage of our uh, total NOI in that we have been selling those properties uh, when we complete them. So it's a little bit more of a merchant approach versus life science where we're holding. 